the, the verifiable web is a simpler, more direct way of saying that all cryptographically guaranteed systems are better. And the reason it's called the verifiable web is because it's focused on the concept of verifying how a system works and knowing that that system will always work that way, which you could only really do with the help of encryption technologies, promising you not through words, not through legal agreements, not through brands, not through whatever, but through math, right? So the first property of all the cryptographically guaranteed systems is when someone looks at it, they can verify that the system will work in a certain way. That's the first property. And that's why it's called the verifiable web. I'll, I'll give you an example. When you look at end-to-end -end encrypted messaging, 15, 20 years ago, nobody really cared or knew what that was because everyone was just happy to message with each other through telecommunications companies on SMS, on encrypted, or uh, through social media platforms. But then the telecommunications companies got hacked and the social media platforms uh, misused the data. And that led to a kind of crisis of faith, right? Everyone had a crisis of faith where they said, I can't verify what happens with my messages before I send them. So I'm not going to send them. I'm not going to use you to send them anymore, telecommunications company or social media company. I'm just, I can't verify what happens after I send the message. So I'm not going to use the system. Well, how is that solved? That was solved through end-to-end -end encrypted. If you go to WhatsApp, you open up any message session at the top, it explains what end-to-end -end encrypted is. So what happened? An encryption technology was applied to a crisis of faith. Everyone looking at that end-to-end -end encrypted message can, with mathematics, verify a certain level of reliability of how the system works. And that resolved people's crisis of faith so that billions of people could message with each other and know that their messages are private to a certain extent. So it's the verifiable web. The verifiable web encompasses end-to-end -end encrypted messaging in this example. The next property of the verifiable web, which is where blockchains excel, is the ability to verify how the system is operating on an ongoing basis. So you verify that the system operates in a certain way before joining, and then you want to know what's happening. This is particularly important for transactional systems or financial systems, which is what blockchains uh, predominantly relate to. You want to know if the bank you put your money into is solvent. You want to know if the insurance company is paying out its other policyholders. You want to know if the ad network you're connecting your ad budget to is um, full of fraud or not. You want to know all these things and you want to know them over time. So you don't just want to verify them once. You want to make sure to know the bank is still solvent. You want to make sure to know the insurance company is still paying out its policyholders. You want to make sure to know that whatever system you're using is continuing to operate as expected. And this is what blockchains and Oracle networks and smart contracts do very well. They provide a consistent stream of verifiable, cryptographically guaranteed information. This is, uh, I think, the, probably the big innovation at a high level, what blockchains, Oracle networks, smart contracts, the centralized computing is doing. The third property uh, is the ability to leave the system under the conditions which you verified initially. And this is really the reimagining of private keys as a new technology for users, whereas it's actually a very old technology for companies and institutions and systems. If you can actually give everyone private key level control, then and they can verify the system, and they can verify how the system is behaving, well, then you have a completely different dynamic with users. Because right now, if there's a problem with your bank and you try to withdraw your money, you can't, right? Before Silicon Valley Bank, many people would have doubted that statement. After Silicon Valley Bank, people don't doubt that statement. Unfortunately, I personally believe that there are many more Silicon Valley Banks to come. And therefore, this third property of being able to leave the system against the conditions which you verify before joining will be very valuable because many systems will begin to disallow people leaving that system. And people will unfortunately realize that difficult hard way of, of not being able to leave when they want to leave. So I think the verifiable web is really an evolution of the information technology world of the 80s and 90s, which was focused on information transfer into which verifiability was kind of added. And what the verifiable web does is it forces systems 
to be built on infrastructure like Chainlink that necessarily force verifiability at the very inception of an application. So when you build an application in a verifiable web way, in a verifiable application way, in a decentralized computing way, the very system that is running that application is forcing certain minimums of reliability and transparency and verifiability and so on. And this is what I think the verifiable web is. The verifiable web is this transition from an information-rich, information-focused internet to a verifiable internet and a unilaterally controllable internet by users. So whenever you hear people talking about self-sovereign identity and owning their own data and controlling their own financial life, it's all the verifiable web. As far as I'm concerned, it's all the same thing because all of that will be achieved through the use of encryption and cryptography and in many cases, increasingly decentralized computation. So I think there's already been a history of some verifiable web work and technologies. And I think blockchains and Oracle networks are now uh, an additional set of cutting edge technologies in that, in that stream of work. And when you combine those two, the, the old tech verifiable web technologies with the new blockchain Oracle network smart contract technologies, you can realize the full that full vision of those three properties of the Oracle, of, of the verifiable web, where you can verify the system, you can verify how it's working, and you can choose to leave at any moment based on the conditions which you verified, which I think is a, a net benefit, net better system. I've I've yet to meet a single person who I explain this choice to, that is to say to me, you know. <laughs> no, I don't want to verify the system, or I don't want to verify what's happening with my money, or I don't want to have the optionality to leave the system. No, obviously, every rational economic agent will, will want those properties. They, the problem is they've either been convinced that they already have those properties, where they definitely don't, or they didn't know that those properties were possible. So that's the challenge of our industry. The challenge of our industry is to make those properties possible and to force them into applications at the infrastructure level, not as an add-on that can then be removed, but at a very base foundational level. And this is what is attractive about this industry, in my opinion.